Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and for those of you wondering where the hell is Moon Lambo today? Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's it's a little after 8:30 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States, where I live in the Midwest, and uh, just now getting to record my first video. So don't worry, you don't have to put me on a milk carton. You know, not M A I M I A M A I. I'm not M I A. Uh, just a little preoccupied with other stuff today. I had a business credit card stolen and uh, some erroneous uh, bogus charges rang up. So uh, that, that turned out to be a bit of a time vampire today. But fear not, delving right into the Ripple and XRP related news. Indeed, this is an XRP centric channel. And I tell you, there's actually a lot to talk about today. And so uh, I've, I've, I've mapped out what I want to talk about here. And uh, I'm going to be putting out a few videos uh, this evening. Uh, I really thought I was going to be doing this several hours ago, but still, I want to take care of this, because I was able to actually map everything, almost everything out earlier today. But look, I'll tell you what, and I am going to talk a little bit about um, the price action today in other videos. I just want to note right now that, yes, I am aware of where, where uh, Bitcoin is price-wise and what XRP is doing. And it's funny enough, in one of the videos I, I talked about just yesterday, I was talking about how there were uh, a chart analysts suggesting we were going to head this direction. So I'll get into all that and what's happening with Binance and other videos. But for now, let's just talk about something a little bit more positive. Take a look at this headline from AMB Crypto. Brand spanking new news. Santander to use Ripple's on-demand liquidity services for four new corridors. So I'm going to cover that. I got a couple tweets from the XRP community. And I've got this, this piece which caught my attention from Daily Hoddle because I happen to be a fan of The Office. How many out there listening to this are a fan of The Office? Probably a lot of you, right? Take a look at this headline from Daily Hoddle. Rain Wilson of The Office quotes Mark Cuban asks for Bitcoin bananas and crypto. Now, Rain Wilson, he is the uh, the actor that plays Dwight in The Office. Oh, lovable Dwight with his butt cut. Oh, quite a haircut he's got. But before I go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, thank you so much for stopping by. I very much appreciate all the support. And go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Because, uh... I don't know. I don't have a sales pitch. It's just, it's it's an okay thing to do. You know, you might not hate it. Is that is that good enough? I don't, I don't know here. Look, uh, Spanish banking giant Santander has announced its utilization of Ripple's remittances service for the, the, the uh, Mexico-U.S. corridor. Uh, this was announced by the executive chairman of the Santander Group, Anna Boten, in an interview. Uh, while, uh, while talking about innovation and in new products to facilitate banking, a Boaten revealed that Santander had joined hands with Ripple to facilitate cross-border payments. And here's a quote from, uh, from Mrs. Boaten. You know we are launching one pay effect, and that's a typo. They mean one pay FX, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little refresher on this in just a moment here. It's good stuff to be aware of here. Uh, so they're talking about one pay FX, but crypto media, whatever. They, they typed, whoever wrote this typed what they thought they heard Anna say. So they wrote effect instead of FX. Anyway, you know we are launching one pay FX, which is a blockchain-based retail cross-border payment with Ripple, uh, by the way, a U.S. company. It's coming to the United States. Uh, we're going to do Open Bank, and we created the North America region, uh, Mexico to U.S. So we now are running a lot of these businesses together, so you'll see good results in the coming years. And then the article continues. Uh, the executive chairman also noted that almost 35 uh, to 36 billion is sent from the United States to Mexico. Uh, they, they mean annually. I don't think they cited that in this, but they're talking annually. 35 to 36 billion. I first saw that n uh, number uh, cited by Alex Holmes, who was MoneyGram C CEO, and he was talking about how MoneyGram right now. So they cited, okay, 35 to 36 billion a year sent through that corridor from the United States to Mexico, and they're talking about how um, they're only pushing, sending about 10% of their current volume when that news, uh, when, when you first announced that at the time, they were only putting 10% of their volume, MoneyGram was, uh, through that quarter to, to Mexico. And it's just so funny to think about what that did to Bitso's volume. You know, it's uh, Ripple's exchange partner in Mexico. But uh, anyway, uh, calling it a part of Santander's footprint, Boten expects the, the program to attract new customers with a commitment of reaching 12% return in tangible equity over the next couple of years, which is way above our cost of equity, which is 
notable, I would say. And so the interview, and I, I watched a chunk of the interview. What well, watched it? Uh, I listened to it while I was driving. That's that's when I have time to get most of my information. As I was driving to the office today, but um, but but check this out. Let me let me jump into this now. I do want to have a little bit of refresher because she was talking about uh, Santander's one one pay effects. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but just a quick refresher. This is a Ripple Insights piece for May 31st of 2018, titled "Live Transactions." Uh, live transaction, rather, Santander's OnePayFX. Santander recently released OnePayFX, the first mobile application for international payments powered by blockchain technology. Millions of Santander's customers in Europe now have access to same-day cross-border payments, a critical improvement from the three to five days it traditionally takes to send money internationally. Right. Uh, but the success of this app is not just about the transparency, a faster speed, and lower cost the service offers. It's about the fluid, easy customer experience for mobile users. It's what consumers require and expect in today's market, whether it's sending a secure message to a friend, hailing a rideshare, or sending money across borders. And uh, that's, for us as XRP holders, the part that states right there, uh, sending money across XRP, uh, <laughs> sorry, sending money across borders, that is what pertains, uh, that concept is what pertains specifically to XRP, because indeed XRP is the bridge that makes all of this magic possible right here. Um, let me scroll a little bit further. The head of digital investment banking at Santander, John Whalen had previously informed of the bank rapidly extending the utilization of Ripple services at an event organized by the Institute of Global and European Affairs. Whalen had noted that the bank has been working on four gateways and soon will be working in all ten corridors. And here's a quote now. Uh, we, in certainty, have a blockchain subordinate overall installments procedure which is working in on uh, four of our passageways. That's Brazil, Mexico, United Realm, Spain. It'll be on each of the ten rapidly. I like that one, <laughs> rapidly. Uh, quick moves at incredibly, amazingly tight spreads. 30 establishment uh, subtleties. It is incredibly individual information. I use it myself. I dispatched assets to the United States. It's available uh, a careful day. And I know that sounds a little bit broken, but that's what I found in general. It, it means it's funny too, because like in listening to Anna Boten, um, it's cl it's clear that English isn't um, her her first language. And so you listen to it, you listen to like what she's saying. She's clearly a very sharp woman, very intelligent, and you can kind of get the gist of what she's saying pretty easily when you're listening to her. But when somebody takes what she says and then turns it into a quote, not just her, but uh, if frequently this happens when they turn that into a quote and then you read it. Part of it sounds like gibberish. I don't know. That's what it comes across to me. As for, but, you know, I give, I give all these people a pass, you know. You know, I speak one language, unless you count gibberish. I'm pretty good at that, too. Anyway, after Santander's deal with Ripple, uh, there were rumors of utilizing XRP, which it later put to rest by stating that the bank was using XCurrent, which does not use XRP for transactions. However, Whalen noted that Santander has tested the service uh, they are to provide for the quarters, calling it completely consistent. But to me, it's you know, like as I always say, as it comes to all of the, the you know, businesses utilizing RippleNet technology, uh, look, if, if they're in, in corridors involving remittances, if XRP can provide a better product at a lower price, why wouldn't they ultimately use it? So again, corridors have to be developed, but it's all coming in good time. All right, next year, and this this is funny. Look, I, I was just scrolling through my news feed, and I came across this, and I've seen this image before. Um, there's somebody named Crypto Operator who put this out, and then they wrote XRP Market Cycle. So this might be somebody that's not a fan of XRP. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. I just like the image because on a day like this where prices are kind of lower, and again, I'll talk about that more in other videos, I just thought I'd share this with you. And you may have seen this chart in the past. It's a Wall Street Cheat Sheet, Psychology of a Market Cycle. And, um, and this was a legit image that's been modified for the purpose of funniness, right? And so you can see at the bottom there's disbelief. Oh my gosh, things aren't so hot price-wise. But then it, you see the chart's going up, and then there's hope, and then there's optimism, belief. There's thrill, there's euphoria. And then it drops a little bit, and then we got complacency, and then it goes down to anxiety. Things get worse in the chart, and there's denial, and then it gets worse, and there's panic, and then it gets worse, and then there's anger, and then there's uh, depression here. And so they made this chart just endlessly go down here as a joke here. And I, I, I think it's funny. Anyway, so there's depression, and then it goes down more, deeper depression, down further, wrecked, down further, rector, R-E-K, I'm sorry, R-E-K-T-E-R, 
down further, ultimate wrecked, down further, ultimate rector, down further, annihilation. And then uh, the, the last one here is Cretaceous Paleogene, Paleogene uh, Extinction Event. So not looking so hot, but like that's that, thankfully none of this is actually part of legit market cycles here, Rector and such. I just I just thought it was funny. So whatever this guy's intent, I don't really care. I think that the image is funny. I've actually seen that, and I kind of wanted to share it with you. And I, I told myself next time I come across this in my news feed, I'm going to do it. It just happened to be with somebody who I'm not so sure is a fan of XRP or not. I I don't know one way or the other. Anyway, uh, next here, this is from Maximus. Who writes, he's, he's at XRP Maximus on Twitter, he writes, I gotta admit, when XRP skyrockets to the next galaxy, I'm gonna miss these days. Part of the fun is the journey getting there. <sighs> I can sympathize with that. Looking back with feelings of nostalgia. Of course, then when you realize what it was actually like during that time, and people freaking out constantly <laughs> and not knowing if this was all gonna pan out, this or that. But still, I, I tell you what, I will be able to look back uh, with uh, fond nostalgia if this goes uh, one day in the future, if this goes the way that I suspect it will. So I can appreciate a tweet like that. All right, last. Rain Wilson of The Office quotes Mark Cuban, asks for Bitcoin bananas and crypto. Rain Wilson, widely known as Dwight from The Office, is asking crypto fanatics to turn over their bananas. Quoting billionaire venture capitalist Mark Cuban, who said he'd rather have bananas than Bitcoin... Wilson is asking for charitable donations in cryptocurrency on behalf of the Mona Foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports grassroots initiatives dedicated to delivering education and gender equality. So I know nothing about the organization, but certainly on the surface, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And you'd, you'd expect Dwight to be involved in nothing less than that, right? I wonder how his beet farm's doing. Anybody wonder about that? Uh, in 2018, the foundation supported education initiatives for more than 411,000 students in 16 projects in 10 countries to help the poor to excel with a focus on women and girls. The organization's new portal is now accepting several cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Donations are processed through Coinbase with 100% of every gift going directly towards education while operating costs are covered by private donors. Uh, and, and I, by the way, there was a promo video and I did watch it. It was about a minute long and it was, it was interesting. I actually, I think he flubbed the whole bananas thing. But anyway, um, in a new promo video, Wilson tells Bitcoin owners, cryptocurrency fanatics and alternative financing fans to donate. Uh, Wilson has been working with the Mona Foundation for over 10 years. Uh, he's ready to help the organization take a boatload of bananas off anyone's hands. And so, indeed, at the end of the video, and this is why I think that uh, like cons what he said doesn't actually make sense, is, and we'll take the bananas off your hands, and, and all that uh, Mark Cuban was saying is that uh, bananas are worth more than Bitcoin. That, that, was, that was his line there. And so, bananas being unrelated to Bitcoin, but wh whatever. So, that's why I think he kind of flubbed it, but that's all right. It's it's for seemingly for a good cause, and he he was he I think it sounded jokingly, but he was talking about how cryptocurrencies are worth. He said we'll take your worthless cryptocurrencies or something to that effect anyway. But I I think he was at least half joking. Uh, you can watch the video and tell me what you think though. But uh, that's it for this one. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very 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 bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.